Hey guys, it's Health Help Hub here, and in this video we're going to help you take control of your health and your weight. We're going to teach you how to create a calorie deficit without the hassle of counting calories. Let's face it, counting calories can be tedious and time-consuming. Who has time for that? Instead of meticulously tracking every bite, we're going to focus on simple, sustainable strategies that will help you eat less naturally. By making a few key changes to your diet and lifestyle, you can effortlessly reduce your calorie intake and start seeing real results. So if you're ready to ditch the calculator and achieve your weight loss goals, keep watching. The first step to creating a calorie deficit without counting calories is to reduce your intake of highly processed foods. Now, I'm not saying you have to eliminate them completely, but it's important to be mindful of how often you're consuming them. Processed foods are often loaded with added sugars, unhealthy fats, and empty calories that can sabotage your weight loss efforts. These types of foods are designed to be hyperpalatable, meaning they're engineered to make you want to eat more and more. Think about it, a bag of chips, a box of cookies, a carton of ice cream, they're all too easy to overconsume, and because they're low in nutrients and fiber, they leave you feeling unsatisfied and craving more. By reducing your intake of processed foods and replacing them with whole, nutrient-dense options, you'll naturally reduce your calorie intake and feel more satisfied after meals. So, what are some examples of processed foods to limit? Think baked goods like cookies, cakes, and pastries, fast foods like burgers, fries, and pizza, sugary drinks like soda and juice, and packaged snacks like chips, crackers, and candy. Now let's talk about appetite management, which is a crucial aspect of weight loss that often gets overlooked. You see, it's not just about eating less, it's about feeling satisfied with less, and that's where fiber comes in. Fiber is your best friend when it comes to managing your appetite. It adds bulk to your meals, slows down digestion, and helps you feel fuller for longer. This means you'll be less likely to experience those pesky cravings and overeat. The best sources of fiber are fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes. Aim to include at least one serving of fruits or vegetables with every meal. Think about it this way. Fill half your plate with veggies, a quarter with lean protein, and a quarter with complex carbs. This simple strategy will ensure you're getting a good balance of nutrients and fiber to keep you feeling satisfied. Now, here's a helpful tip. When it comes to vegetables, aim for at least one fist-sized serving for women and two fist-sized servings for men per meal. Protein is another powerhouse nutrient when it comes to weight loss and appetite control. Why is protein so important? Well, it takes longer to digest than carbohydrates and fats, which means it keeps you feeling fuller for longer. Think about how you feel after a meal that's high in carbohydrates like pasta or bread. You might feel satisfied initially, but then, an hour or two later, you're hungry again. That's because carbohydrates are digested quickly, leading to a rapid spike and crash in blood sugar levels, which can trigger cravings. Protein, on the other hand, helps to stabilize blood sugar levels, keeping you feeling fuller for longer and reducing those cravings. Aim to include a source of protein with every meal. Good sources of protein include lean meats, poultry, fish, beans, lentils, tofu, and Greek yogurt. Chapter 4. Choose Lean Meats. When it comes to choosing protein sources, it's important to be mindful of the types of meat you're consuming. Opt for lean meats, which are lower in calories and saturated fat. Some great options include chicken breast, turkey breast, fish, and lean cuts of beef, like sirloin or tenderloin. When preparing these meats, try grilling, baking, or poaching instead of frying to keep the calorie and fat content down. Now let's talk portion sizes. A good rule of thumb is to aim for a palm-sized serving of protein per meal. For women, that's about the size of your palm, and for men, it's about the size of your two palms cupped together. Chapter 5. Don't fear good fats. Many people mistakenly believe that in order to lose weight, they need to completely eliminate fat from their diet. However, this couldn't be further from the truth. Healthy fats are essential for overall health and can actually aid in weight loss by promoting satiety and regulating hormones. The key is to choose the right types of fats and consume them in moderation. Incorporate sources of healthy fats into your meals, such as avocados, nuts, seeds, olive oil, and fatty fish like salmon. These fats provide essential fatty acids that your body needs to function properly. A good rule of thumb is to aim for a thumb-sized serving of healthy fats per meal. So for example, you could add a tablespoon of olive oil to your salad dressing, sprinkle a handful of nuts on your yogurt, or enjoy a quarter of an avocado with your meal. Chapter 6. Water is your friend. We all know that staying hydrated is important for overall health. But did you know that drinking enough water can also aid in weight loss? That's right. Water helps to fill you up, which can prevent overeating, especially when consumed before meals. Often we mistake thirst for hunger, leading to unnecessary snacking. 
Make it a habit to drink a large glass of water before each meal. This simple act can make a significant difference in how much you eat. Aim to drink 8 ounces of water before you start preparing your meal. Not only will this help to curb your appetite, but it will also ensure that you're properly hydrated throughout the day. Carry a water bottle with you and sip on it throughout the day to stay hydrated. Chapter 7. Move Your Body After Meals Now, let's talk about the importance of movement. While exercise is crucial for overall health and weight management, even small amounts of movement throughout the day can make a difference. One simple habit to incorporate is taking a short walk after each meal. This doesn't have to be anything strenuous, just a 10 to 15 minute stroll around the block can do wonders for your digestion and energy levels. Walking after meals helps to regulate blood sugar levels, preventing those energy crashes that can lead to cravings. It also aids in digestion and can help to reduce bloating. So, next time you finish a meal, resist the urge to plop down on the couch. Instead, lace up your shoes and go for a brisk walk. Your body will thank you for it. Chapter 8. Exercise Regularly In addition to incorporating short walks after meals, it's important to make time for regular exercise. Aim for 20 minutes of moderate intensity exercise 3 to 4 days of the week. This could include activities like brisk walking, jogging, swimming, cycling, or dancing. Find an activity that you enjoy and that you can stick with consistently. If you're new to exercise, start slowly and gradually increase the intensity and duration of your workouts over time. Listen to your body and don't push yourself too hard too soon. Remember, consistency is key when it comes to exercise. Even if you can only fit in a few short workouts each week, it's better than nothing. Make exercise a non-negotiable part of your routine. Chapter 9. Listen to your body. The most important aspect of creating a calorie deficit without counting calories is to listen to your body and pay attention to your hunger cues. We live in a society that often encourages us to ignore our body's signals, but it's crucial to tune in and honor what our bodies are telling us. Learn to distinguish between true hunger and emotional hunger. True hunger comes on gradually and is a physical sensation that lets you know your body needs fuel. Emotional hunger on the other hand is often triggered by stress, boredom or other emotions, and it tends to come on suddenly and intensely. When you feel hungry, ask yourself if you're truly physically hungry or if something else is going on. If it's emotional hunger, find a healthy way to cope with those emotions, such as going for a walk, talking to a friend or engaging in a relaxing activity. Remember, weight loss is not a one-size-fits-all journey. What works for one person may not work for another. It's important to find what works best for you and your body. You got this! So there you have it guys, creating a calorie deficit doesn't have to be complicated. By following these simple tips you can effortlessly reduce your calorie intake and start seeing real results. Remember consistency is key, so make these changes a part of your lifestyle and watch as you achieve your weight loss goals. If you found this video helpful please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more health and wellness tips. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss an upload. Thanks for watching. And hey, if you enjoyed this content, please help support our channel by subscribing. Your support means a lot to us and helps us continue to bring you valuable health and wellness tips. Thanks again!